Ladies and gentlemen, good evening. This is Christopher Aaron. It is the 10th of May, 2017, and I am thankful that you are spending these few moments with me this evening. There's a lot to cover. I could not make a video last week. I was at the New York Mines and Money Conference in New York City, meeting with some mining companies and other analysts and discussing the state of the precious metals market. So let's get up to date. There's a lot to cover. We will look at both gold and silver from a technical basis in this video. First, a few orders of business. When I was in New York, some of you may know I write articles for a number of sites, uh, Gold Eagle. Sometimes I post the links to that. Another site that I write articles for is Bullion Exchanges. This is a dealership in New York City. And I went to visit them and they are a national dealership for gold and silver. And I went to visit them and I went to verify their uh, operations and meet with the owner and the management. And I have very high praises to sing for Bullion Exchanges. And I just wanted to offer you, I have a coupon code. If you would like to order from them, it will save you $10 off of an order of $300 or more. I know it's not a huge amount, but it's something. And I'm offering this because if there's stackers out there that either want the coupon or they just want to try a new dealership, I want to let you know that I stand by this company. I saw their operations with my own eyes. I was there and I stand by their operation. And just a little side note, um, I think it's very interesting that the uh, state of the industry that we're seeing right now, if you go back to uh, 2005, 2006, 2007, when it was industry practice to order Boolean and then not have it for another uh, six or 12 weeks delivered to your door, and it was just considered acceptable that this is what happened. And I won't name names, but some of these dealerships have gone out of business. So I think what you're seeing with some of the dealerships, including Boolean Exchanges these days, is a real streamlined operation. And there's a few other good ones out there. So by all means, if you have a good dealership uh, that you know, order from them, or you can try the coupon code here uh, for Boolean Exchanges. Now, one other thing, you know, because I know this is a sensitive topic and we've seen that the people, you know, over the last year or two have been calling for $50 silver or $100 silver uh, this year or this month, right? They've been clearly wrong, uh, just clearly. There's nothing else you can say about that. So I would encourage you to take an inventory of who these people are who were making these outlandish claims. Um, I certainly have tried to not uh, play to the fear mongering that exists in the industry. So I just wanted to say in my endorsement of bullion exchanges, I'm certainly not saying that you have to buy everything right now. For that matter, if you want to sell, I think that's fine too. Or if you want to wait, that's fine too. I know bullion exchanges also does, uh, they make a market so you can sell to them as well. So it's never all now or nothing. I think there's a lot of opportunity coming forward in all aspects of this industry, and I just wanted to make that offer on the table. So I want to look, I want to start with this little investment philosophy that I learned myself uh, through the crash of 2007, 2008 in the sector, and then the rebound, and then this most recent cycle that we're just rounding out of. And this is something that, you know, in 2008, when I was first learning about the industry, I read a ton of books, uh, not only on precious metals and the fundamentals of the economy, but really as uh, books on the philosophy of investing, the philosophy of speculation. And let's be honest, any investment that we are going to make, whether it is in gold or silver, which we understand the fundamentals about, or whether it's in a mining equity or a stock or even a currency, I mean, it really is a speculation. 
we're really saying that we don't know the future 100% certain, but we are willing to make our best assessment and to therefore put our money out there and attempt to make a return based on an unknown future. And this book, I love this book. This was written in the late 1800s by this guy, Dixon G. Watts. And he was on the um, cotton exchange at the time, the New York, I believe it was the New York Cotton Exchange. And cotton was a huge market at the time, you know, the one of the main textiles of the day. And so this guy was a an investor, a trader, a speculator on the cotton exchange primarily. But he wrote this book. It's a quick read. If you're interested, you can get it on Amazon. It's a quick read, but it's got all these little nuggets. And of course, not every single one is great, but there's a few that really stood out in my mind. And I wanted to share one of them with you. And, and the one is this. Let me just read it. One man told another that he could not sleep on account of his position in the market. His friend replied, sell down to a sleeping point. Right? And this seems so basic. But what are we talking about here? And, and I know with the precious metals, especially at this time, there's a lot of emotion and there's a lot of this feeling like we understand what's going on, but the markets are not moving in that direction. And oh my God, are we completely wrong on this entire thesis? And of course, then there's the difference between the metals and the mining equities. And if you're a trader versus a long-term investor and all these points. But I just want to emphasize this here. Sell, if you're uncertain, if this is keeping you up at night, that's not good. That's not what you want. So you want to sell down to a sleeping point. You basically want to get to a level where if we are right on this thesis that is developing, that you will make a nice return and open up positive possibilities for your life. But if something goes wrong with the thesis, that this doesn't keep you up at night. I think that is so important. And only you know that level. There's literally no way to fake yourself out on that. So you have to know that level. You sell down to that point where literally you can sleep at night. And no matter what happens with the markets, you know that you're going to be okay. Why? Because the ultimate point of this is to live something of a healthy life on many different aspects. A healthy and a prosperous life where we can do incredible things and hopefully help some other people to do some incredible things as well along the way. So if we're not doing that, if you're too invested in any one way and it's preventing you from doing the other excellent things that you want to do in your life, remember those words of Dixon Watts. Sell down to a sleeping point, get to a comfortable level, and then let's dive into this thing. So looking at gold very weak over the last few days, I probably don't need to tell anyone that here Continuing to make a new low today, although off the absolute lows of yesterday on Tuesday. Silver over the very short run, uh, not making a new low. So you're seeing a slight improvement in the gold to silver ratio just over the last day or two. It looks like the gold to silver ratio is topping out to me, but I want to bring that to your attention. We'll look at that a little bit later on uh, toward the end of this video. Let's look at gold first. We bring up the 18 month perspective and bring this thing up. This is handy sometimes if you're new or you just want a reminder of what all these colors mean here. There is a method to my madness. And you'll get to learn that a little bit if you watch these videos going forward. The most important thing to remember here is there is this ongoing triangular shaped consolidation. This downtrend goes all the way back to the 2011 high gold failed once again to overcome this resistance it came at a lower level so there is nothing random about this anyone telling you that the markets are random 
That's a complete fallacy. Markets move in patterns just like every other aspect of human nature. Whether or not we can recognize all the patterns is another question. I certainly do not claim uh, the ability to recognize every single pattern. I have gravitated to a form of technical analysis that works for me more times than it doesn't, but no one can recognize every single pattern 100% of the time. So you go with what works and we see these sellers coming down here we can see the buyers coming up now i still maintain that this was an impulsive move you had the first on a percentage basis the uh the best first half to 2016 in something like 30 years so i maintain that this was an impulsive move at least it appears that way to me and now we're seeing an ongoing consolidation grinding consolidation from that impulsive move the 300 and something dollar move from last year and this is taking this shape of a triangular consolidation now when you are evaluating this type of a pattern on its own just the triangular shape of this is inherently neutral you cannot claim this pattern to be anything other than inherently neutral you have to use other leading indicators to give you a clue as to the direction in which this pattern will resolve so I would say that if you are invested in the precious metal sector, this is still the most important thing to watch. I have a target for the breaking of this pattern that is going to be either above 1500. This sounds dramatic, but above 1500 within 12 months of it breaking or roughly $875 to the downside if it breaks lower. Again, this pattern being inherently neutral, I cannot say just based on this pattern what is going to happen so we have to look at a lot of other different signals this is what we focus on week in and week out in the premium subscription and i do my best to try to bring some of that content to you here on the channel uh, and in some of the articles that i write that are available on the web okay so what could we have here in the short run short run i think we're looking at a bounce setting up but I just think that you know none of this action is all that meaningful unless you're a short-term trader. It's really the breaking of this pattern that's going to be the most important thing really to set the stage for what could be a multi-year move following that. Um, we should also expect, if you're a short-term trader, I would say um, the definition of this pattern is that volatility will be lessening as the pattern plays out. So you have a triangle that's forming here coming to an apex and expect that these swings higher and lower are going to lessen in volatility until at some point here, probably in July or August, you're going to see very little volatility at all for a couple months. And then the breaking of this pattern will happen and it won't leave any guesses based on the lack of volatility that should precede it. So stay tuned, it's going to be exciting one way or another. Looking at silver, it's been, boy, this is, uh, I think I've been looking at some statistics, some of the weakest price action that we've seen in silver in a number of years. This is the RSI reading here. Uh, let's see, we are talking below, uh, below 25 here on the RSI. This is a momentum indicator. This is lower, in other words, a, a worse momentum than the long-term bottom that I believe formed in 2015. So you're looking at an extremely oversold market here. I think it went down something like 16 out of 17 days. I was not able to find another example of that. I'm sure there was one in the last 30 years, but this is some of the most extreme oversold readings that you've seen in silver. So um, on the positive side, I would say that I expect a bounce in silver here. On the negative side, the th there's technical levels here in silver that have just been sliced through as if they did not even exist. And I don't like to see that as a technical based analyst. I don't like to see that. For example, this region here, 1675 to 1725. Look at the number of times that this was important. You had um, you had this hold here as support, right? And then it was broken, acted as resistance, acted as resistance again, 
broke finally and acted as support. Okay, so you had four, one, two, three, four times in which the 1675 to 1725 level uh, served as an important support resistance level. And on this time, it just sliced through it like a hot knife. So it just tells me that there's a change in this market. Market participants are acting based on a new set of uh, beliefs, a new set of knowledge, and a new set of expectations. This is no longer an important level for the market. I will be deleting these lines going forward because after four times, the market's just not paying attention to this. Now, a couple other points here. Uh, once again, silver is acting weaker than I expected. So this line here, which we're talking the rising trend from the absolute low at 1365 has been broken. Um, I would say that silver is one of these markets, uh, I could pull up some examples, but silver is one of these markets that likes to violate short-term uh, levels. It likes to violate these, these levels on a short-term basis and just kind of make mincemeat out of the short-term oriented traders and then recover levels like this. So I'm going to look for this. I want to see if this ends up being a false break below this level. And that would tell me that if that is happening and we get more of a consolidation over the next few weeks, it just tells me that silver is going to be lagging gold for probably the beginning part of this move that I expect coming up. Uh, I would not read anything more into it from a long-term basis. Now, if we fail to close back above this line, it's going to be sending me somewhat of a significant warning flag that there is a different manifestation happening here over the intermediate term than I think many people were expecting, myself included. Of course, I go with what the market offers. And I always maintain the right to change my perspective if the market is showing me something different. What else would a thinking man do than to change his assessment when new data is presented? So here's what we're looking at with silver. It's acting weaker than gold. I want to see if this trend line is recovered over the next week or so. And if not, we will progress from that point. So the weakness that we were looking at in silver, I want to put this in perspective here. Big picture items to look at. So from the high in 2011, which corresponded with the low in the gold to silver ratio, there was a very clear rising channel here in the gold to silver ratio moving higher. Of course, when the gold to silver ratio is moving higher, it tends to correspond with prices of the metals that are falling, right? When silver underperforms gold, the prices of the metals tend to be falling. This was the big signal here to me. This was in April of 2016. We started to make most of our investments last year in February before this signal because I was looking at some other things. But this was the big trend change signal for me the break of the multi-year rising channel. This is a very clear channel and you can see that. How important that break was here, you had a retest and then coming down and consolidating. Now, what looked to be shaping up was just a consolidation, sort of an inverse cup consolidation here happening in the gold to silver ratio. And this looked like it was getting ready to break down and something has gone not according to the standard trajectory for a breakdown of this magnitude. So this is a warning. You can see this here, this impulsive move taking out the 74 level in the gold to silver ratio. We're back at around 75 ounces of silver to purchase one ounce of gold. So in my mind, this is a warning, okay? This is not an end of the world signal. This is not the entire sector is going to collapse signal, but this is a warning and you have to pay attention to this if you're heavily invested in the sector. And what does this warning mean? Well, let's put this into perspective now. Um, I want to back this, this chart out here. So what you can see is the, the idea that this was consolidating and then getting ready to continue lower this has not happened, 
right? So you're coming back up, you're coming back up into the range of this broken trend channel. Now this is sort of the least aggressive that silver could be. The least aggressive that silver could be and still maintaining the thesis of silver getting ready to outperform over the next three to five years. So backing this chart out, we're looking at the same gold to silver ratio. This was right here, what we were looking at. We're now looking at this since 1980 uh, and carried out into the future. This was the trend that we were looking at. You can see very clearly this rising trend channel here. The breakdown that we saw there, it was consolidating and boom, now it's shot up higher. So in my assessment, what we are talking about here the question is, is the gold to silver ratio going to retest the recent highs near 84? Now, I don't think that this trend channel will be regained. I don't think it's going to close back in within the trend channel. This was such a clear trend that was developing here and then broke down decisively April of last year. I think you were seeing something like another retest of this trend channel. But that said, what can happen on these retests is that the prices of the metals could theoretically move to new nominal lows. So in a worst case scenario, if the gold to silver ratio were to continue moving higher and sort of test this bottom line here, you could see the price of silver maybe retest that 13... 65 level, maybe gold retests 1,000, or maybe they even drop quickly to new nominal lows for a final flush. And this would be very scary and sort of fool everyone over the short run. But I do not think that this channel will be regained. Look at some of the other really clearly defined channels that formed here, moving higher in the gold to silver ratio over the last 30 years. And you can see these little times where similar things have happened. This was the channel that formed uh, this sort of surge higher in the gold to silver ratio into the credit crisis of 2008. And then after this broke and silver started to outperform, you did see right here in the beginning of 2010, you did see this sort of spike higher right here coming close to that broken channel before silver then started to outpace gold again. And if I remember correctly, this is when gold had um, had risen to over 1250 and silver was still stuck at around $15 an ounce back in 2010. Look at some of the other times where this sort of thing has happened. This is the one you're talking about in 2004. Uh, we're going way back and you had the clear break right here from this channel and then coming right back up and testing this channel higher on the gold to silver ratio. And I think this was this corresponded to silver having risen from four dollars an ounce to eight dollars an ounce and then collapsing back to five. And you got to remember, we're talking about some high percentage moves there, uh, relatively speaking. So again, it did not regain this channel, although it was sort of a scary correction in the price of silver. You can see another one of those right here going back to the late 90s. This was after there was a spike in silver and then a correction. This had to do with Warren Buffett having, having bought silver in the mid uh, 90s and then selling his silver for uh, a 60% profit or so, of course, before the big move happened. So Warren Buffett does not know everything either. Otherwise, he would have held on to his silver in the mid 90s. But anyway, the point is here, I think, you know, when we're looking at this gold to silver ratio, I think what you're looking at here is this spike higher, it's retesting this channel from a higher level. 
And the really difficult part of this is that a retest of this channel can, even in a worst case scenario, which I, I have to keep my mind open to this until we see that long-term downtrend break in gold, I have to keep my mind open to the possibility that there could even be a new nominal low forming in the price of gold, which would be basically the ultimate setup. It would just be very hard and we would look to take some protective action in the form of buying some puts and selling some of the miners that were recently purchased. Uh, but if you're gonna have a signal like this, you have to be prudent and you really have to pay attention to what the market is saying. So thank you for watching this video. There's been a lot to cover. This is the type of research that goes out. This goes out in print format and we look at all the leading indicators and the actual portfolio that I am managing here. And we're trying to gear ourselves up for what will hopefully be in the third quarter, this move higher that I'm anticipating. It's certainly taking the most challenging route that we could expect to get to that level. So this is available on the website. I also do individual consultations with individuals from really diverse backgrounds. And I love working with individuals because there's so many people, uh, you know, who are either looking to change around their investment portfolio with the precious metals, or they're looking at this for the first time. And in my experience, if you go to a traditional investment advisor, uh, they will just steer you away from the precious metals or they'll say, yeah, sure, put 5% of your portfolio in gold or the GLD fund, uh, you know, and that's fine. But if we're entering a bull market here in the precious metals at any point over the next 12 to 18 months, I think there's a more significant opportunity than the standard investment advisors can provide. So this is why... I, I work with individuals on a one-to-one -one basis. Thank you again for watching. Again, you'll see, if you wanna try out Boolean exchanges, you'll see the coupon code to that below. If not, that's fine. Stick with your own dealer of choice. And I will see you this time next week. Thank you very much.